Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program. In this video I'm testing out a Beechcraft Starship, the model of which I actually made for X-Plane 11, but it's easier to import the model into Kerbal Space Program than into X-Plane 11, oddly enough. And so I decided to import it here and see how it works. Unfortunately it doesn't work great. This was during a live stream when I decided to test this out. And it had a problem with uh, skidding off to one side. You'll see it in this clip here. Now, because this was during a live stream, I was talking away, and it's not going to make much sense with the video um, in the flow of things during this video. So, uh, we won't be hearing the in game audio except for one segment where I didn't do much talking. Anyway, uh, so on this, I'm using Fire Spitter engines. Uh, they're the. Um, uh, customizable one, they're the pr procedure, basically procedural ones. And I'm using B9 procedural wing parts for the control surfaces. The wings and the body and the engine nacelles are all uh, blenderized. They were 3D modeled by myself. And so, yeah, uh, textures unlimited required for the shininess. So here we go. And the problem is at around 60 meters per second, first of all, it should be able to take off before 60 meters per second. But at 60 meters per second, it sort of skids like that and does bad things. Now, I, well, all I did was I decided align wheel to the ground. I had already done, and it didn't make any difference. But um, uh, the I decided to lock the engine, the motor on the wheels, and that seemed to be a little bit better. But I was contemplating all these settings that I didn't know what they were. The wheels in the back, the main wheels are adjustable landing gear. The front wheel is actually a stock landing gear because boy, do I not want to make landing gear. So yeah, that's another exception to the modeling here. And it's just, I mean, modeling the body wings and uh, canard and vertical stabilizer is pretty simple, thankfully. So not too much work. So here we go. After doing the locking of the motors, I finally managed to sort of get it off, coax it off the ground, but barely. You can see I'm basically, when I pull up, I'm maxing out the pitch, and it just barely wants to get up. You can see the pitch is maxed out there. And this is really pretty fast, uh, you know, it's more than 150 miles an hour. This should be able to lift off, uh, even without flaps, at uh, 112 miles an hour or something like that. So, yeah, not performing the way it ought to. And, but we got it off the ground very, very barely. And I decided to fly it. Now we got some audio because I was just flying around casually and not really commenting too much. And uh, enjoying the look of it. The Beechcraft Starship is unique after all. It was designed by Bert Rutan, who made a lot of unique planes, like the Rutan boomerang that I made. Previously, you can find that video on my channel. So, yeah, that's more unique than this, I have to say. Um, neither plane particularly successful, I don't think. And uh, this um, had a lot of issues with it, this design. But when I first started flying flight simulators, this was like the vision of the future. This was the plane of the future kind of thing. And uh, so... The flight sims like Flight Sim 4 and Flight Sim 5, I think both of them had it, I forget, I'm not entirely sure, but um, yeah, around the early 90s this was the thing, but then didn't turn out so successful. Uh, these days, uh, sort of in the same class are the small private jets, those are sort of occupying the same space as this was meant to. Anyway, so uh, with that I try and land it, and... I didn't really mean for the flaps to adjust themselves based on the pitch, but that's all right. Now we saw how it worked on takeoff and it didn't really want to go up until like 80 meters per second, which is obviously wrong and I'll have to tweak that. But keeping that in mind, I had to figure that I'd be landing pretty darn fast too. And so that's the basis for this approach. trying to gingerly slow it down but not take any risks and fortunately we have landing gear that can handle much higher speeds than than uh, real life landing gear on this probably could but there we have it and actually it didn't skid off to the side I was pretty sure it was going to skid off to the side I was rather surprised that this worked 
after all the skidding that we had early on. So, yeah, a um, little bit of troubleshooting. Not sure whether the locking the motors was the key thing or not, but maybe it was. I decided to try and take off again, and that, uh, well, it didn't work out all that great. It wasn't a spinny issue, but it's, it's just the sheer lift issue and the fact that this thing does not want to go up. And it needs a whole lot more speed than it ought to. Now, if I increase the, and it's a wheels uh, during the live stream cheered right there. Uh, when, uh, and that distracted me, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to use that as an excuse, but maybe. But uh, here we go. We were above 80 meters per second. It's fast. It's not slow, but it was not going up. So it's very peculiar. And it's very peculiar right now. I'll have to tweak some numbers. I don't know what numbers, but that was an explosion like it was a bomb or something. That was quite an explosion. Anyway, I also decided during the stream to try out the XB70 again and try and coax it past Mach 3. In my previous video, I said sort of the road to Mach 3, but didn't quite get there even in a dive. So this time I decided during the live stream to try once again. I had tweaked some numbers. And of course, the key thing is if you increase the amount of lift that the wings get, that also increases the drag. If you decrease the amount of lift the wings get, that decreases the drag, allows you to go faster, but it's harder to get off the ground. And you can see how fast we need to go just to get this off the ground right now. It's not the ideal thing. So, yeah, I'm not entirely sure, but here we go. It's looking halfway decent. It's not X-Plane 11 level, of course, but it's looking pretty good for a plane in Kerbal Space Program. And, yep, we needed to turn around eventually because I didn't want to get too far away from the KSC. Ultimately, I gave up on trying to actually land at the KSC, incidentally. I went for the speed and uh, ditched the returnability thing. You can see the we didn't start off with a full load of fuel, and here we are half an hour in, and it's finally above Mach 2.9 and increasing. We're in level flight, you'll note. And just about as we break the half an hour mark, it'll uh, break Mach 3. But yeah, not with a full fuel load. So that's a thing. And it's about to run out of fuel, which is another thing. So 2.97. 2.98. It could be coaxed a little bit higher. You can see the high dynamic pressure, so it might be better off at a higher altitude, but it takes a lot of effort to get it up here, and there is Mach 3. So I get to Mach 3.1 before I decide to shut off the engines. I did tilt the wing, uh, I don't know what to call those, the, the parts that tilt on the wings. I decided to tilt them down in celebration for Mach 3, and there's Mach 3.1, it could probably go faster, but we don't have enough fuel. So, yeah, back down again. I try to land it. There's no runway around here. We're already too far away from the KSC. So, yeah, just trying to find a place. But it sort of had the same problem as the Beechcraft Starship. It just randomly decided not to have much lift. You can see the pitch max out there. We're not going that slow. In fact, we're going at a speed that's about the same that we got off the ground at. I mean, it's higher than what we did when we got off the ground. I tried to increase the control deflection on the canard controls, and they are pointed down, which should, you know, lift the nose up. But instead, it decided to nose down even further. And that's probably because the control surface on the canards was causing more drag. But I don't know. It's, uh,. I don't know what to think about that. But anyway, so Mach 3 achieved, but problems. <laughs> Still problems with uh, both the Beechcraft Starship and the XB-70. I'll work through them, but they're, they are beautiful planes, and I'm glad that I modeled them. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.